The more I'd learned about the king and his people, the more I realized just how arrogant the attitudes of the colonial office and Lord Charles were in this whole affair. Shaka had so far proved a most affable host. His power was his security. And we were fools to have thought that we could simply change the course of history with what we would like to think of as the mystique of white civilization. They are like monkeys trying to steal the autumn harvest. And yet you treat them like kings. Why, Nkosi? There are things we must learn, Goman. Ankumulem boy. What things can they teach us, Nkosi? Like how many monkeys fighting their armies? What they really want from us? And what we can learn from them? Angoleki sang sample.
Sugan! I said kill him! Kill him! That verdict is not ours to decide, Dingan. I am the king's brother. In the name of my ancestor, I order you to kill him now! Yes, Dinga, you are his brother, but also his heir. Masam. You have destroyed the evidence, Dinga, but not your guilt. I wonder what he could have told us about you, Sangana, and Bob. You are a fool, Dinga. If you truly wanted to rule in this place, you should have planned Shaka's death the way Shaka would have planned it. Using a valid strategy, he's built a nation of warriors. Would you have the people believe that a Nufasuba would ever turn his fear against his own emperor? It is the work of destiny. As a man lives, so shall he die. You remember that, Dingai? Remember that. She asks, can you save him? Can you give him life? Like you did to that girl. <coughs> she was in a coma. She would have recovered by herself if they hadn't tried to bury her. Miek, miek, miek. Will you tell him? You know you'll never understand that. He can relate only to light and darkness. He feels the darkness approaching and he wants you to give him back the light. You're washing your hands of the whole thing. Well, why not, hmm? I think it would be fair to say that uh, you had it coming to him. Ooh, you think we deserve to die, do you? Do you? What? You listen to that mob out there, Finn. I tell you, Mr. Finn, Sharka's armies without Sharka may be a greater threat than we've ever dreamed possible. And I fear that we may be the first victims of that anarchy. We have a chance to win the king's favor. We cannot fling it to the wind. We control Sharka's soul. We control the whole of Southern Africa. Control his soul? That's the game, isn't it? By proving that we have the powers of life and death. That's a game, all right, Mr. Finn. And this minute is called survival. Well, we don't have those powers, Lieutenant, and that man is coughing up blood and phlegm, which would indicate a punctured lung. And if that is the case, then he's as doomed as that girl he had murdered. Well, then you must pray. <laughs> For him? No. For us.
beg pardon, sir. What is it, Captain? News from the north, sir. Sharka. The devil's that savage up to now. Nothing, sir. Unless, that is, the Zulus are given to being commanded by spirits. Oh, get on with it, man. Speak plainly. According to a report from Colonel Cloty, sir, we have every reason to believe that Shaka has been murdered. Murdered? Not by farewell, I hope. No, sir. By one of his own people, apparently. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I took the liberty of checking Colonel Cloty's sources. Stabbed through the heart, apparently, over a week ago. Good. Very good. Tell Colonel Cloty to return his troops to the Cape as soon as possible. Isn't that a bit hasty, sir? The Zulus may have regrouped on a new leadership. Highly unlikely, Captain. Shaka was a fluke. The natives will revert to their natural state of sniveling old women. Well, now, you must excuse me. I have a luncheon appointment. Good day. Come, ladies. All around us was death and destruction. The uncertainty caused by the attempt on the king's life had created such panic and mistrust that warrior turned on warrior, and any poor soul found not displaying the required amount of grief at the king's demise was summarily slaughtered or impaled. It was a most terrible period of our stay, and fear and uncertainty became our constant companions. Pinyanga. Blende. Inja, Nikos Namsanj. He asked after the king's health, Mr. Finn. Thank you, Mr. Fector. I got that. The great elephant's condition is stationary. The moment there is any improvement, you'll be informed. I hope you are not lying. If the king is dead and you are keeping the truth from the Zulu people, your carcasses will provide the cushions for Shaka's grave. If you don't believe what I'm saying to you, then go and look for yourself. I'll return at sunset to be further informed. And if he does peg out Boyo, you'll be the last one to find out. Well, how is he really? <sighs> He's dying, Francis. Doesn't seem to be a damn thing I can do about it. If his fever doesn't break, I doubt he'll make sunset. It has been many days, too many. People must see Shaka now before panic sets in. Well? <sighs> he can't stand up, let alone walk to the gate. I'll have to give him a helping hand. Francis, the man is dying. Let's try, Henry. It might be our last hope. I'm afraid there is nothing we can do, Mrs. Farewell. From Colonel Clouty's notification, it would appear that your husband never succeeded in making contact with that savage. Indeed, it is doubtful that his party ever set foot on the shores of Natal. I've said as much in my communique to Lord Bathurst, whose foolish idea it was to sanction this whole affair. But how can you simply assume they never got there? There is no mention of them in any of the reports we've received. 
One report, Sir Charles, one miserable report from a messenger from God knows where, tells you Shaka is dead and you believe him. Yes, I'm, I'm truly sorry, Mrs. Farewell. And if there's anything I can do to hasten your return to England, I should be only too happy to oblige. Mrs. Farewell, anything to help? <clears throat> Mrs. Farewell, excuse me. Mrs. Farewell, Simpson, Harlow Simpson, South African commercial advertiser. If you will permit, ma'am, I have an inquiry or two to make. In reference to what, Mr. Simpson? Your husband and Shaka Zulu. Well, that's old news, isn't it? As your newspaper has so dauntlessly reported, they're both dead. His Majesty's valiant knight pitted against the Zulu dragon, inflicting death even as the warmth of life drained from his own veins. I have rarely read such trash, Mr. Simpson, even in the shoddiest of drawing room plays. It nettles me to have my husband's name tainted by your waggish tabloid. Good day, Mr. Simpson. Drive on! You're right, Mrs. Farewell. It was trash. Perhaps I can make it up to you by printing the truth. With your help, that is. And what is the truth? His Majesty's valiant knight pitted against the blindness and racial bigotry of the Cape's governor. Stop! Somerset. Firmly believes the only way to deal with these Kaffirs is to blow their heads off. Your husband's outlook was more enlightened. His eulogy could be a valuable lesson to the future administrators of colonial Africa. But then there's no reason to write a eulogy, is there? He's alive, isn't he? And on what do you base that assumption, Mr. Simpson? Your intuition. And the fact that you came to see Somerset to help find your husband. Well, I admire your resourcefulness, Mr. Simpson. But I suggest you concentrate your efforts on more current topics. As I said, my husband is old news. Drive on! If you should reconsider, madam, I think you will find our waggish tabloid may prove to be your best and only ally. was a dose of power. In the past few weeks, we've done a great deal of rushing and very little treading. 
I fear the Angels won't let us get away with it for much longer. Well, the Angels have always been a rather understanding lot, Finn. But I take your point. Now, do you know, I think that Shark is a believer. Like most great men. The empire that he's built was in his imagination before it became a reality. Well, you've saved his skin, old boy. So now let's deal with his imagination. <laughs>